Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I'm gonna teach you a really fun technique today that uses this masking tape. Now this technique can be used with a variation of widths and I'm gonna give you lots of tips about this project. In addition to that, I've got several other samples to share with you, so make sure you hang with me to the end of the video. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Click on the subscribe button down below and next to it, you'll see a small bell icon. If you click that, you'll receive notifications when I'm live here on YouTube, as well as when I upload a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. This technique uses masking tape. This is just regular household masking tape. You can buy this at any big box store or a hardware store. Make sure that you protect your work surface. I'm using one of the small grid papers. You'll be able to find all the products I'm gonna be using today, of course, with the exception of the masking tape, over at my online store at lisasstampstudio.com. I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock here. You can use either very vanilla or Whisper White. This technique works well on any light colored cardstock. For this project, I decided to choose three different colors. So I'm gonna start with pear pizzazz. Now, very important that you realize before we begin is that the ink pad itself is only a certain width. The ink covers about three and a half inches of the actual ink pad itself. So keep that in mind when you're cutting your cardstock. You can certainly make it longer, but you're gonna to have to travel with the tape. And let me show you what I mean. You're gonna to wanna to pull the tape longer than the cardstock so that you'll have a clean area for your fingers. So you can see this is a little bit wider than what I'm gonna need. You're gonna place the tape right on top of the ink pad and you're going to tap. How hard you press is going to determine how much pigmentation you're actually picking up. And because I know I'm gonna to need to cover a little more than three and a half inches, I'm gonna come back over this and I've slid it over a little bit to the left and pick up more color. Now I'm gonna place this right here at the very top of this cardstock and I'm gonna press it down and then I'm gonna lightly rub and I'm going to lift. I've got several other samples to share with you. To create this background, it really doesn't take any experience whatsoever. I also want to point out that there's a residual amount of ink on here that you may still want to use. So I'm going to make this one a little bit different than the other sample I share with you. I've just turned the masking tape around so the pattern will be slightly different and I'm going to rub that in place. If you're looking for an even pattern, this is not the technique for you. This is gonna be very, very random. In addition to that, it can get a little bit messy. So if that bothers you, make sure that you use disposable gloves. I'm gonna switch colors now. This time I'm moving over to soft sea foam, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're taking a brand new piece of masking tape, longer than what we need so that it'll reach for our hands. We are gonna tap it on the ink pad. I'm sliding over to make sure I get good coverage on this other end. And then I'm gonna line this up underneath the last row I just created, and then we'll pull that off. And again, just like before, I'm going to turn this around so that I have a slightly different pattern this time, and I'm gonna press again. The reason I did that is because I'm going to be using the residual ink. If you're going to re-ink it for the second row and you want it just as dark, you don't have to turn the tape around. And I chose to add one more color. This is mint macaron. Just like before, we've got another piece of masking tape longer than what we need. I'll go ahead and I'll place that on top of here and press. And I'm gonna put this right underneath that last row and press. Because this color is a lot lighter, I'm actually gonna ink up the same piece of tape again. Now you're gonna notice here that it's curling and that's because we've peeled it up. If you want to use another piece of tape, by all means, you can certainly do that and then we'll lift. What we're left with now is a really fun abstract background. The best way to stamp on this is with a solid stamp. And I've chosen to use this adorable dandelion image and it's from a stamp set called Dandelion Wishes. You'll be able to find this product in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog. Now, if you don't already have a demonstrator and you would like complimentary copies of the current annual or the holiday catalog, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Contact Me. I'm gonna be using my Memento Black ink pad because I find the darkest color possible is gonna show beautiful on this very abstract background. I'm gonna slide this off to the side and you're gonna notice that my image is very large compared to my ink pad. So my recommendation is to turn your image face up on your work surface and then tap your ink pad on top of the image. That's going to ensure that you don't miss a spot while you apply ink. Once it's inked up, we'll bring that image right back in and I'm gonna stamp that right here near the bottom center. Lots of firm, even pressure when you're using these larger image stamps because you wanna make sure you get a nice crisp image and get all the detail. 
I'm gonna push that scrap paper off to the side and I'm gonna flip this over now and I'm gonna add adhesive to the back side. I've opted to make a smaller card today and I'll have all the cutting dimensions down in the link of the video description below. That's gonna send you over to the pictures and those cutting dimensions and the supplies I've used. And I'm gonna center this on a piece of basic black cardstock. Very, very simple. I did opt to add a greeting and I chose this Happy Day greeting from the Itty Bitty Birthdays stamp set. That's in the annual catalog as well. I didn't wanna take away from this. Keep in mind, I've got more samples to share with you. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna use my dimensionals. I'm gonna place one on each of the sides. I'm gonna use my Take Your Pick pickup tool and I'm gonna remove those paper backings. And I'm gonna add my greeting down here on the lower left side of my card. Very simple card. This is one of those cards you can make bunches of. Great for the holidays because you can package them up as gifts and give them. Now let me show you a few others. This is the exact same format. The only difference on this one is I re-inked the tape both times in the pear pizzazz and in the soft sea foam and in the mint macaron. And the difference also is that I embossed that image using shimmer black embossing powder and I used some beautiful glittered black organdy ribbon to bring up the sparkles. Now let me talk to you a little bit about this embossing powder. It is so much fun. I don't know if you can appreciate the shimmer here in the video, but it's really beautiful, especially on solid images. You're going to want to use it with a Versamark ink pad and then sprinkle it and then heat emboss it. My tip for you about this glittered powder is to make sure you shake the container well before you use it. Because the glitter is heavier than the embossing powder, it'll have a tendency to set here at the bottom. So shaking it up will help distribute it evenly as you go to sprinkle it on your project. So here's two variations here. This one, remember, we didn't re-ink for the second row. Here's another for you. This one uses a completely different color palette and a different stamp set. And I did add an embossed background on this. Really pretty, isn't it? And then last but not least, exact same variation here. I actually tapped off the excess color on my scratch grid paper so that it would be lighter here on the cardstock. So it's the same colors as this card. It's just lighter toned here. In addition to that, I added a layer of vellum here on the card just to keep a nice, muted, simple background. There are lots of different ways that you can create with the masking tape technique. I bet you're gonna look at masking tape in your house a whole new way. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day.